Next up, at UFC 289, we have the co-main event of the evening. This is a huge co-main event. I appreciate this co-main event. It's it's uh, giving this card a little bit of oomph. We got former champion Charles Oliveira taking on perennial contender Benil Darius. Charles Oliveira, 33 and nine overall, four and one in his last five, coming off the 11 fight win streak, losing loss to Islam Makachev. Yeah, what is He's that flag? On, uh, it's some random ass small country. I forget. It's on Tapology. Uh, Benil Darius, 22 and four overall. He is five and zero oh in his last five. He is riding an eight fight win streak. And he has beaten every contender over the last couple of years. They give him a contender, he beats him, gets passed up for a title shot. They give him a contender, he beats him, gets passed up for a title shot. And he's coming off that win over Matoush Gamrot. Charles Oliveira, we all know him at this point. He was the champion for a very long time. And he's one of the most well-rounded fighters you're going to get. He's got phenomenal striking, incredibly technical, laser pinpoint accuracy, which gives him some very real power. And he's got phenomenal jujitsu. He has the most submission wins in UFC history. He's averaging two takedowns per fight. I mean, he does everything. He does it all well. He's a very, very good fighter that really didn't find himself until later in his career, right? You see there's nine losses there. Somebody that talented having nine losses. Well, he hit that streak. He really found his own the last couple of years. He's taking on Benil Darius. Benil Darius is also very good everywhere. You don't go on that streak being very one-dimensional. He's good everywhere. He's got very good power. He's got some solid control. He's also averaging almost two takedowns per fight. And he is a no-gi BJJ world champion. So he's competing in tournaments. He's the more accomplished jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner of the two, just as far as straight credentials and accomplishments are concerned. Obviously, Charles Oliveira, a little more effective. Most submission wins in UFC history. But Benil Darius really showcased his grappling credentials, his grappling abilities, his defensive wrestling in that Gamrot win. His defensive scrambles were absolutely incredible. I mean, he was able to just do things that we haven't seen other people do with Gamrot. We've seen Gamrot lose, but we have not seen people outscramble Gamrot the way that Benil Darius did. So, I do think Benil Darius wins this fight. I think... And people are going to absolutely hate this. I think Charles Oliveira hit the perfect streak at the perfect time. I think he's, a, I don't want to say he's overrated because he's clearly not overrated. He's accomplished more than 99% of light heavyweights that have He's accomplished more than, than Islam did, other than being undefeated. So I'm not going to say he's overrated, but I think the people he beat weren't the best people on the planet. He loses to Gamera the same way he just lost to Islam. And I think Benil Dariush watched that Islam fight. He's going to come forward. He's going to pressure. He's not going to be afraid to go to the ground with him. He'll get it to the ground. And I think uh, Benil Dariush wins this fight. Obviously, Charles Oliveira can submit him in a scramble. It'd be ludicrous to not think that was possible. But I think Benil Dariush's rest, or, uh, grappling credentials can sort of keep him out of some of that trouble. So I like Benil Dariush to get it done. I threw one and a half units on him at minus 125 about a month ago when they announced this. What do you think, Jakey Boy? Azria is the flag. Azria was a major ancient Mesopotamian civilization which existed as a city from the 21st century BC to the 14th century BC, then to a territorial state and eventually an empire from 14th century BC to the 7th century BC. That is via Wikipedia. That is the flag that you have there for uh, Benil Darius. So, uh, you know, the more you know there in that situation. Now to get to this fight, let me just say that nothing in this fight would surprise me. Darius can get knocked out. If he got knocked out, wouldn't surprise me. Oliveira can get knocked out. If he got knocked out, wouldn't surprise me. Darius can get submitted. If he got submitted, wouldn't surprise me. Oliveira can get submitted. If he got submitted. So nothing in this fight would surprise me. But when I'm breaking down this fight, one of the most important things to me in this situation was, and let me first off by saying, my pick is going to be Charles Oliveira. The champ has a name. It is Charles Dubronx Oliveira. But I am scared to death that he is going to get put out. Because but, but Neil Darius will just move forward. Because he doesn't care if you try to take him down. Because he knows that he can outscramble positions. So he moves forward and he throws heavy, heavy hands. And we saw Charles Oliveira get dropped time and time and time and time again. But 
with that Islam fight, it felt to me that he came out and was trying to prove a little bit too much. He seemed a little bit too amped up in that fight because you saw him, he came out with a flying kick. And then two, I mean, five seconds into the fight, he's getting, I mean, lit up with that right hand because he's pressuring. It wasn't smart pressure. We see Oliveira all the time pressure. He's a pressure shoot the box guy, but a lot of the time it is smart pressure. He still gets hit, but he wasn't as reckless as he was in that Islam fight. And even a minute into that fight, he's pulling guard guard on Islam in that fight, jumping up and pulling guard. And I thought, I, it felt like he thought that he was going to be a lot more successful in his guard than he was. We get to the second round and it felt like when I was watching that fight that he kind of lost track of what he wanted to do. But he was, he, his guard wasn't working. He got hit. He thought he was going to have success with the feet. So I'm going to take that Islam fight as like a little bit of a, a, a weird fight when it comes to Charles Oliveira. So I'm not going to put a, a ton of weight in that fight. And it was Islam and we know who Islam is, but the biggest breakdown for me in this fight was watching the Dariush Gamra fight. And I picked Gamra in that fight, and I thought Gamra was going to steamroll this guy because I thought he was going to be able to get the takedowns. But when he was shooting those takedowns, the way that Dariush avoids being taken down is he he scrambles out of positions by just kind of rolling through stuff if you get to his legs which Gamrot was able to get to his legs was able to get to those positions he is rolling through positions he is doing the weird stuff and Gamrot to his credit he doesn't want he won't play the jiu-jitsu game he wants to end up on top he wants to be the guy in a top position he will not settle for weird stuff the difference is Charles Oliveira will do the weird stuff. So if they get in those same type of scrambles that Gamrot was in, Charles Oliveira will do the weird stuff. He will do the leg locks. He will do the off the back, the triangles. He will look for the arm bars. He will look for the weird stuff in those scrambles that Gamrot does not look for and was not looking for. And I believe that in an MMA mixed martial arts fight, when they are rolling around doing the weird stuff, that Charles Oliveira is a better grappler in pure jiu-jitsu scrambles than a guy like Darius. Darius has shown that he doesn't really want to play around. He could have he could have tried to just out-scramble Gamera, ended up on the ground, take, try to take top position, but he wanted to get back to his feet because he really kind of wants to just kind of strike with people. He wants to throw heavy hands. And I think... That there's going to be some weird scrambles and Charles Oliveira is going to eventually find something weird in this fight and get the job done. If not, I think he's able to get to positions to be able to win rounds in this fight and be able to pull this fight off. I, I don't think Charles Oliveira is done yet, man. I, I think that, that that Islam fight was a little bit of an anomaly. He's going to come through. Both these guys are hittable. Both these guys can get submitted. Like I said, nothing would be su surprise me in this fight, but I'm going to back my guy, my Brazilian. As you know, I'm going to be moving to become a premium member. I'm trying to move to Brazil. <laughs> My Brazilian brother, Charles do Bronx Oliveira, I think is going to be able to find something in this fight to either win rounds or get a win by finish. Do Bronx is my pick, but I'm scared to death. I'll be honest, I am scared to death uh, because he is such a chinny guy, and, and Darius hits like a fucking truck, man. Yeah, I mean, I threw that. I wasn't nervous when I placed that bet. They dropped the line. I was like, minus 125. Bam. I hit the opening line. And... Um, you know, then I was like, uh, you know, should I have? But then, like I said, you, you look at who Oliveira's beaten. Great, he's beaten a lot of great people, but we've talked about this before. We talk about the Poirier, Justin Gagey, um, Michael Chandler. Like, they're not, the rankings and the actual skill levels aren't aligned in this 100% agree. 100% agree. Like, they're just not aligned. Like They are Justin top 10 Poirier, guys. They are not top three guys. N n correct and, and 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 no fault of their own they're beating who they're supposed to beat and stuff but what what basically has ended up happening is they're all names so the ufc just keeps booking names against names for these big fights for these fun fights the the fights that they can promote and then there's people like damir armin a, b a bunch of those Gamera, guys garam Gam there's just a bunch of those guys just beating the crap out of everybody behind the scenes never getting they haven't been afforded the opportunity to fight one of those guys and i think they'd beat every single one of them and i think those rankings the the one through five and the five through ten would literally completely flip if they all fought each other so my point there being charles Oliveira hasn't really beaten those guys and 
Benio's only beaten one of them, Gamrod. It's not like he's got a whole world of beating them it all wasn't either. Like, it wasn't like he beat the shit. I mean, that was a close fight. I thought Gamrod could have gotten that decision. Yeah, all, 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 all he did was basically just defend takedowns to be able to win that. Correct. And he got and he obviously dropped them. But I, like, and Gamrod is one of those guys that kind of everyone drops him <laughs> as well, too. So it's not like he came in and was like super offensive. No, it was, it was like just dominating it was, the positions. And, the circumstances were impressive. It was after God knows how long away injuries. He looks like a, he gets underestimated because he looks like a dad that lives on the block. He looks yeah, like he you. just looks like I wish, man. That's fantastic hair. That's great hair. Um, same color. Anyway, it is the same color. <laughs> he's, kind of a, he's kind of a sneaky, good-looking dude, huh? Yeah, hundred. He's one of those guys that like every single like a, like a, if if he went to like a college town, every college girl would be like, I want to fuck that guy. Yeah, the dad, yeah, the yeah, like that. That type of like just like, and he's like so so cool and calm yeah. and just whatever. Right, relax. And I also relax. loved. I love that Charles Oliveira is like uh, still like a super grounded dude. Even after the loss, he didn't change a bunch of stuff after a loss. He didn't do anything. He's still doing his own thing. Do you know what he what he bought? Like one of, some of his biggest purchases? You know, everyone's like, they buy the houses and the yachts yeah, yeah. and this or whatever. He bought uh, racing horses and a bunch of cows. <laughs> you saw that in the event. He's like so proud to show them off too. I fucking love Dubronx, man. He's a good dude. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to him. go to, uh, when I move to Brazil, me and him are going to be best friends and I can't wait. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for that. Uh, we own picks.com. Unlock the safety parlay. Unlock all the picks, all the bets, the optimizer, the tools, the information, everything you've ever need. We got some stuff going on. This fight, we own picks.com. Click become a member.